What's up guys, it's Project, bringing you a quick leveling up guide for Epic 7. Now I haven't been able to grind my team to be super strong on my first account, but perhaps that will paint a more realistic picture of what most people who just beat 1010 will be capable of doing for the most part. For those that haven't beat 1010 yet, simply completing all the side areas, doing daily hunts, labs, abysses, spirit altars, and dabbling in the new side story will easily get your party to level 50 before facing the final boss. But once world difficulty is unlocked, difficulty certainly spikes up, and getting your heroes to 6 star is going to require a lot of fodder and a whole lot of grinding, which is where saving your stamina, like I mentioned in my tips video, is going to come into play, because you're going to need a ton of it to really grind hard. Some even go on to wasting crystals just to gain more stamina, which isn't a bad strat to get those final units leveled up and promoted so you can feed 5 5 stars into your main unit to become a 6 star. So let me explain how to get the most EXP to level up heroes you're wanting to add to your party like say Lorena or for leveling phantasms or other fodder. First off, less is more. The less units you have on a team, the more EXP they will receive. Additionally, units that are already max level, a third of the EXP they would have gained is instead given to other non-max heroes in the party. So knowing that, you want one core DPS unit that's max leveled, then the rest of your party the fodder that isn't max leveled. This allows you to level multiple fodder at once fairly quickly. Since you can't have multiple of the same colored phantasm, then the team comp would be one phantasm and two normal fodder. White phantasms only get 3% more EXP than other 2 star fodder, so don't gimp out on 2 star fodder. Level them up too. But this strat is why Sez, Vildred, and Clarissa are highly valued since they're the kings and queen of AoE. People can say they're meme heroes to get, but when 70% or more of your endgame time is consisting of grinding, then that makes them top tier in my opinion. Certainly not useless at the least. If you own one of these heroes, then your helper can be a healer to sustain your own Sez or Vildred to take on harder content. Or you can level up 4 fodder and use one of these heroes as a helper for even more EXP, but it's harder to clear stages reliably. Now, if you want to level just one hero fast, usually a new hero you plan to use or that you've invested in, then the second strat for this is to have the one hero you want to level up, and that's it. No one else. Who's going to clear the stage is the helper, because they don't factor into the experience penalty. So all of the EXP for that stage goes towards the hero you're leveling up. So this is entirely dependent on the helper being strong, but usually says is really common and you'll see a Vildred every now and again as well. Ravi is also another unit to look for in harder stages due to her lifesteal sustain, though her clear speed is much slower since her AoE has a long buildup. Next up is where to gain the most EXP. I'll say it bluntly, there isn't really a great specific spot. You mainly want to be grinding a stage that also drops the catalyst you need for your heroes, or for Yuna's quest. Two penguins, one stone. You can check the region info to see what mons drop what catalyst. Generally, the more mons that can drop that catalyst within that stage, the better the chances of getting a catalyst. Now, the mini lab places in story are likely the better for catalyst drops, however, they suck for end stage experience gain, and also take a long time and requires manual play so it's not worth running them if leveling fodder is your priority. Cracks in the world are likely the best EXP per minute, but they require some heavy deeps characters or with reliably high sustain to keep them alive. What you see in the background is 8S normal, which I barely was able to beat with my Ravi and a helper says, but my lion got 29k EXP at the end of it. I'm sure world difficulty would give more, but also probably needs a way higher CP Ravi or says to get through it if they can at all. Cracks cost 40 stam stams, but the experience is about on par with clearing 4 stages that cost 10 stamina anyways. So these are mainly for efficiency sake. Other than that, honestly the event defense stages are better than early world stages, but they cost 50% more stamina. The experience I got from 1-4 world difficulty was less than a thousand difference with the event stage 17 world difficulty, but for the event you get grass thingies for event goodies. So it's your pick between more event goods or saving stamina for more runs in the long run. Events in the future will likely be similar to this, just do the highest stage possible that either has many mobs or drops the catalyst you're aiming for. 
you'll likely need to do some manual play if you're just using a helper Cez or Clarissa in the defense stages. Kill the mobs first before the boss, you'll take less damage over time this way. And Cez's S3 can nuke the entire fodder if you attack a trash mob with it. But standard level 50 helper Cez and Clarissa struggle with event stage 16 world, so pick them for 15 and 17. Vildred destroys everything. Stage 19 gives almost 10,000 EXP from having just one fodder and is real quick to do, but the drops aren't that great. Stage 18 can drop an epic catalyst and drops fangs and such, but it's the hardest stage of them all to beat with just one helper, so you need to get a lucky powerful helper or have a decently leveled hero that you're leveling that doesn't die immediately like 2 star fodder would. Pick your poison between them all. So yeah, these are the tactics and stages you should try farming. If you're wondering what hero to get 6 star first, it's generally going to be Cez, Ravi, Vildred, Clarissa, and Lorena. Generally, you want your farmer character 6 star first, so you can clear faster or take on harder content to get your next 6 star character faster. Lorena is perhaps the best boss killer in a game, hence why I mention her since you'll use her for hunts or abyss. As a final tip, expand your inventory. 50 just ain't gonna cut it when you're farming for fodder, Supporting 3, 4, or 5 star phantasms to promote your heroes, your main team heroes, and the other heroes you're not really using. So I recommend getting at least around 100 slots so you're not wasting time constantly managing them all the time. They cost crystals, but hey, they're honestly put to this use rather than getting more 3 star artifacts or heroes from summon. Plus, you'll always get more crystals in the future, and this is a one time investment thing. So do it. But well, that wraps up the video guys, hope you found it informative. If you're a new player, make sure to check out my mega tips video that will be in the end screen annotations and or description. Should help you boost your knowledge of the game somewhat. Also make sure to give this video a like, let me know you guys enjoyed it and want more. Comment down below with any questions or tips and subscribe for more Epic 7 epicness. Oops, sorry, sorry, my bad.